So, Stephen Tibbs. Thank you very much. Um, can I congratulate the Honourable Member for Amber Valley on securing this debate through the backbench business committee, giving us the chance to ask the Government's views on this topic, which is of great importance and enormous public interest. And I'm delighted that both the Pensions Minister and the former Pensions Minister are in their places on the front bench for this uh, debate. And I, I agree with much of what uh, the Honourable Member for Amber Valley said. I think the, the idea of a third of adult life in retirement is a, a sensible yardstick to run with. He made the point uh, briefly in passing about the importance of implementing the recommendations of the auto enrolment review. I agree with him, that's very important. We're uh, repeatedly told that's going to be done in the mid 2020s, but time is either running out or possibly has already run out to achieve implementation of that by 2025. Um, uh, but in my remarks, uh, I really just want to focus on the process, particularly, that we are in here, and just recall the wise words of David Cameron, who said, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Uh, and he argued, rightly, in my view, for a culture of openness in uh, government. And, and one of the results of his view was the 2010 Protocol on Publication of All Government Social Research, most recently updated last year, which states principle one, the products of government social research and analysis will be made publicly available. And it goes, goes on to state that it should be published promptly uh, within 12 weeks of uh, completion. And for a number of years, uh, that was, to its credit, the government's approach. So in 2017, when the first review of the state pension was undertaken for the government by John Cridland, as the Honourable Member for Amber Valley has uh, pointed out, um, his report and the report of the Government Actuary were both published on the 23rd of March 2017, nearly four months before DWP's own view was set out shortly after the former Minister uh, took up his post as Pensions Minister in June 2017. The DWP's view about state pension aid was set out on the 19th of July uh, 2017. Um, I've often expressed great regret that the Department, for some reason or other, perhaps reflecting a different approach across government, has abandoned the uh, practice set out um, by David Cameron and instead now resists publication of research and analysis or delays it as long as it possibly can. Preventing public discussion no doubt has the benefit of avoiding ministers having to answer difficult questions, but it has the disastrous drawback of worsening policy outcomes because the policy cannot be informed by public debate before the decisions are made because the evidence that would allow a debate isn't available. The government uh, publication protocol was watered down a little bit last year, but its essential gist remains unchanged. It says, for example, quite rightly, I quote, the primary purpose of so social research commissioned and conducted by government is to inform policy and delivery, but it also plays a role in wider public debate, end quote. And absolutely right, but in the DWP at least, we've discussed in the chamber numerous occasions the requirements of that protocol are simply ignored. They are not being fulfilled. And I've been hoping very much that the new ministerial team would turn over a new leaf on this and, and take a, a more enlightened approach. And indeed, the new Secretary of State has hinted that he is considering the advantage of greater openness. But here we have a flagrant example of the bad habits of his predecessor of hiding analysis and evidence until it is convenient to the government to release it. Instead of publishing the evidence four months before the government's decision, as was done in 2017, around the time the former minister was appointed uh, Minister of Pensions, instead of that, the government is keeping, the department is keeping the evidence hidden until it makes its announcement, quote, early in 2023, presumably, as the Honourable Member for Amber Valley has suggested, at the time of the, the budget uh, next month. So the main point I want to make in these, the brief contribution to this important uh, debate 
it is to press the Minister to publish now both the report of the independent reviewer, Baroness Neville Rolfe, which the Secretary of State received on the 16th of September last year, what's that, over four months ago, and the related Government Actuaries report, which was submitted to Ministers on the 5th of October. Publish them now. Why have they not been published already? What possible benefit can there be in keeping this important work and, and evidence hidden for all of this time? The Select Committee has published uh, today an exchange of letters with the, the Minister on this subject. Uh, asked why these reports are not being published before the Government's announcement, as they were for the 2017 review, the Minister, who is in her place, uh, uh, replies, and I quote, uh, this is a different publication schedule to the last review. The issues are still under consideration, and so we think this approach is more appropriate. Well, in other words, that appears to be saying we don't want anyone to see the evidence until we've made up our minds. Uh, this is still under consideration, and so we think it's uh, not appropriate to publish the evidence. But surely there ought to be a public debate about all of this before the government makes its decision, not afterwards. And uh, this sort of instinct of kind of hiding things and not disclosing uh, things, not complying with the requirements of the, the cross-government protocol, I, I think is very damaging to the government's ability to make good policy. Surely ministers should take advantage of public debate to inform its decisions, uh, not refuse to show anyone the evidence until after it's made up its mind. What has become of David Cameron's belief in sunlight? Uh, we aren't talking here about confidential advice to ministers. There's no requirement to publish that but rather expert analysis, which will eventually be published, which sets out the evidence which will underpin the government's decision. Publish it now so that everybody can see it. The protocol uh, says, and I quote, analysis should be published promptly as early as possible following agreement of the final output. And, and so it should be. Uh, the recent uh, in, the independent review was announced in December 2021. The terms of reference said that it should explore what metrics government should take into account when considering how to set state pension age, and it should include a consideration of recent trends in life expectancy in every part of the UK, whether it remained right for there to be a fixed proportion of adult life people should, on average, expect to spend over state pension age, and what metrics would enable state pension costs and the importance of sharing these fairly between generations to be taken into account. The Select Committee uh, agreed months ago that once Baroness Neville Rolfe's review had been published, we would take uh, evidence on it, including from her, as the Honourable Member for Amber Valley has said, before the Government announced its decision. But now the Government is unwilling to publish the analysis before it announces its decision, we clearly can't do that. So, the Sun has reported that the government plans to raise the state pension age from 67 to 68 as early as 2035, affecting everybody who is uh, 54 and under, instead of 10 years later as set out in the current legislation. Is that the right thing to do? Well, we need to see the evidence. And the key evidence is about future projections of life expectancy. There is, as we've heard from the uh, SNP spokesman uh, folks, uh, in, in her uh, intervention earlier, there is emerging evidence that the trend of rising life expectancy is not what it was before the pandemic. One of the expert witnesses to the Select Committee this morning said, and I quote, mortality seems to have peaked because one reason why there was increasing mortality was that the Second World War lifestyle was ironically quite healthy for people, and the numbers are now going down quite a lot. Now, I don't know what uh, we were talking about, something else this morning, I don't know what evidence he was drawing on in, in making that remark, but I don't know what evidence the government is going to be drawing on either, because it hasn't been published. It should be published, and there shouldn't be a delay 
in, in publishing it. Cohort life expectancy statistics are produced every two years. A new set uh, is expected this year. The latest 2020-based projections show life expectancy at 65 still rising, but at a slower rate than in previous releases. And, of course, the 2020 figures didn't take any account of changes arising from the, the pandemic. The, the change in projection has prompted some commentators to call for the planned rises in the state pension age to be abandoned or at least to be slowed. Uh, Lane, Clark and Peacock took the latest ONS life expectancy projections and re-ran the 2017 calculations undertaken by the Government Actuaries Department and they concluded that any move from 67 to 68 would not be needed until the mid-2060s rather than the mid-2040s, and certainly not by the late 2030s, as suggested by The Sun. They also suggested the move from 66 to 67, currently scheduled to be phased in over a two-year period from uh, 2026, could be put back, uh, they suggested, until the end of the, the 2040s. And uh, they went on to argue that if further ONS statistics show relatively lower life expectancy growth, this could imply further delays to planned in increases, perhaps even abandoning the planned rise to 67. And let me uh, just quote the, the uh, former pensions minister, but two, I think, uh, Steve Webb, now a partner at, uh, at the same company, Lane uh, uh, Peacock. Uh, he said, the government's plans for rapid increases in state pension age have been blown out of the water by this new analysis. Even before the pandemic hit, the improvements in life expectancy which we had seen over the last century had almost ground to a halt. These are very important public policy questions. They ought to be debated in Parliament and amongst the public before the government announces its decision so that that public debate and parliamentary debate can inform the government's decision we shouldn't just see the evidence afterwards, after the government has announced what it plans uh, to do, because the, 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 the chance of changing the government's mind at that point, is, is, it, it just isn't going to happen. There should be a wide public debate going on now. It can't happen unless the independent review and the government actuary's report are published before the announcement is, is made. So I do ask the Minister to resist the temptation to keep these documents hidden for even longer, instead to remember the wise words of David Cameron to be open and to publish these two key documents.